In today's video, we are going to be doing something no one has ever dared to do before. Animating iPhone icons. It's probably been done before, but I haven't seen it. More specifically, we're going to be starting out with the calculator icon in my After Effects composition. I have my reference, which is just an iPhone icon that I found on Google. I'm going to start off by recreating the icon just with some basic shapes. So in my composition, 1920 by 1080 at 24 frames per second, I'm going to use my rectangle tool. And I'm just going to set the color to maybe like a nice blue so we can kind of see what we're doing. So I'm going to start off with the base shape. I'm just going to click and drag and kind of line it up with the top and the left hand side and just drag until you've kind of matched it. Then I'm just going to center this and then because I know this is definitely not. So I'm just going to scoot it over using my arrow keys and that is pretty good. I'm just going to be naming stuff as we go along because that's going to be easier. And I'm going to increase the roundness over here in the new properties panel because I love the properties panel. I'm going to hide this and keeping the rectangle tool. I'm going to make this LCD and just again, just kind of line it up as good as you can. Just make sure that is centered and then add some roundness to it once again. Bada beam, bada boom. And we're just going to name that LCD display. Then I'm going to use the rectangle tool again and just make this little button down here and just increase the roundness. Then I'm going to go to my ellipse tool and we're going to be recreating this little circle. So while I'm, I'm going to click and drag and hold shift while I'm doing it so it stays proportional and we're just gonna size it up the best we can to this little shape here and I think that's pretty good. Duplicate it by clicking command D, drag it over and duplicate this again and drag that down and duplicate that again and drag that over. Back to my ellipse tool and since these are just a little bit bigger I'm just gonna do it from scratch like that and that is orange button one and click V, command D shift and drag down. Now I want to arrange these buttons by row. So one row, two rows, three rows. So by clicking to the very top, our second row, I'm just holding shift and clicking when I'm selecting these. Now I'm just kind of imagining because I had this idea of I want the buttons to fly up and do a spin. And the way I want it to do, I want to do like a snake. So I'm just arranging my layers while we're at it. So this will be the next one. One, two, three, four, Five. And that is uh, pretty decent. I'm just going to reveal my base calculator again. I'm going to drag out my reference layer. Now we can just cut everything. So I'm going to select my base calculator. I'm just going to open this and color pick it. LCD display. Color pick that. And then my orange button. Select all of them. Click this and drop that. And bada bing bada boom and the light gray color whoopsies just like that we have recreated the calculator icon that's a pretty good start select all of these and i'm gonna pre-comp them that's just gonna make it easier to do individual and the animations we want in the pre-comp and then if we want to animate the whole thing we can just animate the pre-comp itself i'm gonna click command a to select all my layers and then just turn on 3D. And we wanna make sure that we're working in Cinema 4D because we want to extrude the shapes. Down here, if it says Cinema 4D, just you're good to go. If it says Classic 3D, you wanna switch that to Cinema 4D. So I'm gonna start with the base of the calculator, but before that, I'm just gonna open two views so we can see it from the side, see how much we're extruding it. Down here, I'm gonna open it up and go to Geometry Options, and I'm gonna set this to about what? 50, 50 will work. I am gonna move the anchor point. You can either go into the anchor point and then put in half the value of the anchor point in here. So let's say right now we put it to 50. So in the anchor point, you wanted to put it to 25 and that'll center it. Now I want to go into all of these and I'm just gonna search for extrusion depth. And then we can select all of these new ones that we haven't touched yet. And I don't want them to be as extruded as our main calculator, just cause that might look a little too crazy. We don't want the buttons to be that crazy. So maybe we'll set them to 10. And then once again, I wanna hit A to bring up my anchor point. And I want to keep the anchor point in the middle of these as well. So for each one, I'm just going to set it to five, which will put the anchor point right in the middle of our shapes. And then we can select all our layers and just drag them and hold shift at the same time. And that should snap to the face of the calculator, just so we have that little extrusion there. And if I take my orbit tool, which is up here, you can see we've now created a 3D shape. That's pretty good. We've got a little bit of extrusion. I'm just gonna Command Z that. The only thing I wanna animate in here for now anyways is the buttons flipping. So I'm gonna go to about one second and I am gonna keyframe all my buttons. I'm just gonna select them and keyframe the position. And I'm gonna go forward half a second, just about. And then we can just select them all. And I don't know why I closed the two view because I kinda want it right now. 
and I'm just gonna drag forward while holding shift. And then I'm just gonna go forward another 12 frames and I'm just gonna copy and paste each of the beginning keyframes to get them back into their exact spot. Then I'm gonna go back to the beginning and I'm gonna hit R and then I'm gonna keyframe the X rotation for all of them. And then I'm just gonna click U to bring up only our keyframes. I'm gonna go forward to half a second and I'm just gonna select all this again. I don't know why I didn't. Actually, I'm just gonna go forward until the very end and just do minus one. That should give us a nice little rotation of the buttons. As you can see, if you look at both the left and straight on, we can see that they are rotating. Just gonna decrease that to quarter so we can see it in, in animation. I'm gonna add some easing to all of these. So I'm gonna use flow and let's just use six speed for good measure and let's play that back and we have a nice little flip select all of these and i'm just gonna move them in just a little bit so they don't go up that high i just want them to kind of clear the bottom kind of like that so you can see there's only a little bit of a gap between it i don't want them to be too high up going back to our original view as i mentioned i want to have them come in and kind of like a, a wave since we've set it up pretty easy and i'm gonna make sure that the keyframes aren't selected just the layers otherwise we'll get a bit of a mess and sequence you can just adjust these drag them out so we have that length of the beginning so the buttons just on then the beginning and play back and we have this nice little wave animation now i'm going to go back into our main comp and as you can see right now if i were to rotate it it's just a 2d layer nothing nothing insane and even if i turn it 3d it's still just a 2d layer but when working in 3d in after effects with 3d pre-comps you can hit this little continuously rasterize thing which essentially is just gonna allow us to animate the whole thing in 3D space. I'm gonna hit T view. I just wanna see where our anchor point is. Just gonna wanna try to get it in as close as possible to the middle. And I think it's a, right now it looks like it is set right in the middle of the calculator, which is fine by me actually, because that is our main main thing. We want the we don't care about the buttons being in the middle. We just want it to rotate around the calculator itself. We don't want nothing too crazy. We just kind of want to show off that it is a 3D shape and just add a little bit of fun to it. I think I want it to come in with a little spin. So if I just keyframe the position here and then probably the Y rotation, I want it to spin in. Let's do a plus one and put that to zero. I want it to come in. Kind of look at that, kind of spins in. Let's just drop this to make it a little bit faster and maybe even have it land at a slight angle just so we get a bit of a sense of that 3D. And then, so I'm just gonna keyframe the X at minus 20 for where I want it to end and just do it with maybe like at a plus 10 at the beginning and then just have it come in and slowly land like that. And we can add some sexiness to it, of course. That's a little bit too fast. I'm just gonna drag it out, cut off the beginning of this. We don't really need that. And I want it to go back just a little bit further. I don't want it to be that close in. And then we have the buttons flipping in. So what I'm thinking is maybe have it do a continue the spin backwards like that. So we have something that looks. And I think if we speed this up, honestly, we might have something pretty solid. Cause I want, I kind of like the idea of it kind of kicking once it finishes the kick, it kind of kicks the buttons to go. It's missing a little bit of something. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add a null to this. So I'm going to select it and we are just going to create a layer, new null object and call this controller and put that into 3D space. And, and then I just want to make sure that my anchor point is pretty good for it. If I just select my anchor point tool and drag this backwards until the center of it. So now if you rotate it pretty darn good. So I wanted to kind of still have some motion while it's doing that. We're just going to keyframe the X rotation, lift it up a little bit so that it always just has a little bit of that movement going, even though it's very, very slight. I open the position of it and zoom it out a little bit just to always have just a little bit of motion. I think right about here, I'm going to keyframe the X rotation and have it do another full spin. Sexy speed that thing and let's play it back. That's a little bit too fast. So what I can do is I can select all of these. And while I'm holding Alt, I'm going to drag the last keyframe, which is this one. And then you can just Alt and drag it out. I want the button starting to flip right here. So I'm just going to double click and then just select all of these. I move them to our playhead. So right as it kicks it up, it's going to start my animation. And maybe even just a little bit before. Otherwise, it's looking a little bit too linear. I feel like this is a little bit too slow. And we're going to open up our keyframe editor, our little speed thing. So I'm going to do a couple things here. Let's start with the position. I'm going to drag this up 
just to make sure that it doesn't come to a complete stop. You know what I mean? Then I'm going to hit the X rotation and I'm just going to drag these down. Might even drag them up. Drag it down here. Drag that down. Or maybe up. Oh, that's... I don't even know what I kind of did there, but that's... That's kind of wavy, honestly. Ooh, hold on. Let's let, let let's play that back real quick. That's kind of wavy because then it's like it's flipping, and then it's like it kicks it up, goes back down, and then whoa. Hold on. We just cooked some fire by accident. That is fire. Yeah, that's awesome. There is one thing I want to try, so I'm just gonna try and add an expression to the position and the rotation. And it's just an inertial bounce expression. I just want to see what that looks like. So I'm not sure that I'm liking that for the position anyway. So I'm just going to try that on the rotation. Because I really like the bounce that it has on the out. Because it just kind of settles it in. Which is perfect. So what I'm thinking of doing is if I undo again. And then once we get right here. I'm simply going to cut it and then open up my rotation and paste it. So that way it should only apply it to that last bit because I really like everything else the way it is. Oh yeah, that is insanely wavy. I'm just going to hit N to mark the end of my, on my comp, sorry. Play it back. Oh, that is sweet. Dude, I'm really liking that. Is it perfect? No but that is pretty awesome. There's one thing I kind of want to do, and you should probably know what that is. And that is a push rush time. I'm just going to set that to 12. I just want to see what it looks like. It elevates any design and I am a sucker for. That is, that's just perfect. That is absolutely perfect. And just like that, we have animated an iPhone icon. We had some happy accidents as Bob Ross likes to call them. And it turned out pretty sick, honestly. It was just kind of an accident. But you know, sometimes stuff just works out because it's supposed to. I just want to say thank you and uh, look forward to see you again next week. Peace out.